the XC90 is such an excellent vehicle. It just looks so good. Comfortable and impressive, especially with the white interior like this one has. Just a pleasure to look at and experience and drive. I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I'm visiting Parkway Volvo, and I'm going to do an overview of the new Android system. Now, I did one a few years ago, but they've done a little bit of updates and tweaking and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to go over the, the Android system that all the Volvos use now. Uh, so this hopefully will be useful for anybody, for any vehicle in, in a new Volvo. Now, this is this particular vehicle is the XC90 um, B6 all-wheel drive Ultimate. Uh, but as far as the actual system, it, it basically functions the same way in, uh, in all the Volvos. So first thing that's really handy is if you press and hold this button here at the bottom, it goes into screen cleaning mode. So you can go ahead and clean it off and clean it up anytime you want. And when you want to go back to the screen, you just press and hold the button and it brings it back like so. Now this is kind of like the default home screen. And basically it has like these little, uh, little, little sections that, that depending on where you were at. So like right here, I was in the satellite radio, it popped it up there. So, uh, it's going to be where you left off on certain things. And so they're like quick access things that you normally use regularly. So the maps, uh, it does have the, of course, Google maps and you're able to search. Uh, for addresses, but also things just like you would in a Google map and you can pinch zoom and zoom in and see where you're at in relationship to other things get your bearings that kind of stuff and you can always recenter it and then you do your searches right up here and We're at Parkway so we can you know, it already has that because that was searched before Then it starts the navigation which we're already here. So and close that out now, if we want to go to gas stations, uh, restaurants, shopping, uh, that kind of thing, we could do that. So if we hit that, it'll pull up uh, different gas stations, the price of gas, how far it is away, and it has ratings and the, the actual brand of the gas as well. All right, and then you've got restaurants. You can find, you know, the nearest restaurants around you, how far it is away, ratings, uh, how much it costs, that kind of thing. So just real quickly, you can kind of, if you're not in the area, in an in a area that you're familiar with, you can quickly kind of figure out where um, common things are just by hitting these buttons. And see, we're in Wilmington, North Carolina, so there's a lot of options here. Uh, you also have the voice recognition here, so like the OK Google feature. Um, cancel. So yeah, if you say that, then it's gonna pop up and you don't even have to press anything. You could just like tell it what you want. Uh, so that's, that's really handy. So there's a lot of, a lot of overlap with you, what you would find on your phone, basically, if you have an Android phone. Uh, very, very good, very advanced, and um, you know, it's, it's a good system. Now there is different settings here that you can go in and, uh, and you know, adjust it the way you want. The guard guidance audio, um, you can have it on or off, that kind of thing. Root options, let's say you want to avoid tolls, things like that, you can adjust that. All right, so let's get out of the map. Um, but, so you can see that, that there's the navigation system. But this is the center screen. Let's go ahead and pull from the top so you can see that it does have notifications, just like you would have on a phone. You can clear them right here. Clear your notifications. All right, now there's these buttons down here. You also have a digital clock, kind of small up there, but it does have it, and uh, your connectivity uh, settings and also the user um, that it's using as, as well. So right here, these little tiles, we hit that, and this will go to like what you would find on your cell phone uh, where it has uh, different options, different uh, you know applications and stuff. So we saw the maps, Bluetooth media player, your radio, satellite radio, now you'll notice uh, when you hit radio that it's, uh, you either have satellite radio or you have FM. Uh, there's no AM option. It's just radio, you know? Uh, I thought that was interesting. 
So now you can see that that option is now on that spot. I, it was before the satellite radio, now it's just a regular radio. All right, so remember we're gonna choose satellite radio. It has the presets and, and all that. There's the channels, you have your favorites, you can sort it by categories, uh, all that kind of stuff. And now when we go back to the home screen, so you can see now it's satellite radio. So depending on where we are, what we're doing, uh, it'll appear here. Uh, you also have Google Play Books. These are audio books. So let's say there's a particular book you want to listen to, you can download it and listen to it while you're driving. Same thing with the news. So Google News typically is when you on your phone is you read it and it has pictures and stuff like that. This one actually has um, uh, different audio forms of the news. So you can kind of get uh, like their five minute briefing from Reuters, uh, or you can get Fox News, CNN, CNN, uh, CNBC. Tech Talk, Bloomberg, stuff like that. And it just kind of like, it's audio, so you can kind of catch up with the news without even reading it. you just on your way to work. Uh, really cool. And there's different things like Spotify, iHeartRadio, all kinds of things like that. And you notice this tile right, this, this section here can be expanded with that little arrow. All right, so this next one here is your phone and Apple CarPlay. So this is already an Android system, but if you need to want to use Apple CarPlay, you can uh, use it with the system. Uh, you will have to plug it in to the system though. All right, it does have the Google Assistance. Uh, Assistant, that's the, the audio, uh, basically, what we're talking about with the, if I say it again, the, uh, the Google thing. Um, the car status. Uh, so this is just kind of showing you the the status of like the tire pressure stuff like that uh, also on the car status up here at the top it has the oil life um, so right now we're you know don't have to change the oil it's fully ready to go uh, air quality which is pretty cool it, it actually uses your location and uh, uses the cell signal that the vehicle has and acquires the local air quality in your area. Now the vehicle does have a cabin filter, so that way, you know, let's say the the air quality in the area that you're driving is not as good as it is here, uh, you can uh, recirculate the air and, you know, you know, even if you didn't recirculate there, it does have a cabin filter, so that way it kind of helps out with the exterior air. You just might not want to roll your window down if the if the air quality is not good. But you can see it's good here, so um, and it actually gives you uh, specific numbers and stuff too. And then the Play Store right here, uh, this is where you can, once you sign in, have access to other and additional apps that are designed for this particular uh, system. Now the owner's manual. When you hit it, it's like one of the best things of all time because a vehicle like this is very feature rich and sometimes uh, there's a lot of features that you're not familiar with. So instead of actually having a big physical book to get out and read and flip through and try to find things, it's a digital form which you can search. Uh, also, let's say you don't know what to search for. You can hit interior, exterior, you can look for symbols, categories, uh, see when the latest updates happened. Uh, so let's say we go to interior here. We can choose a section of the interior that we want to learn about, like the steering wheel, the gauges there, this uh, here on the door. So let's say we go to the door there and then we want to know what this is. We get that. Uh, so there we go, locking and unlocking from inside the vehicle. And uh, so it gives you a little brief understanding of what that button does. And you can do that throughout the vehicle. Really, really handy. Uh, even if you don't have the ability to, you know, search for it, because you, you don't know what it is, right? So you can actually narrow it down to a specific thing. So we go to the interior. Let's go back over here. Um, let's go to that, pull that up. Let's pull, let's go to here. All right, so that's the defroster there. Let's go to there. Climbing control, center display views. It kind of gives you some general stuff. Uh, and then you can go into more detail here by expanding it. It even has videos and everything. So that's the, it's explaining basically what I'm explaining. So you can expand and get more and more and more information depending on what 
you're specifically looking for. So that owner's manual is fantastic. Having that on a digital form that's searchable and you can go through it really helps you get familiar with the vehicle before you start driving it. And you want to, on a vehicle like this, you really want to know how to use the system so you're not trying to figure something out while you're driving, basically. All right, so let's go back here. Now, so we saw that button and that pulls this up. And of course, we go back to the home button using the physical button here. But there's this other little cog wheel, looks like a little gear. You hit that and that's where we can go into the settings. And there's different category settings, quite a lot of them. So this one's driving, there's sound, connectivity, controls, profiles, privacy, uh, Google, and then system. So let's go to driving. Uh, so this set vehicle is an all-wheel drive system. So it, use, it does have an off-road mode in which you can activate. Uh, it adjusts the height of the vehicle and stuff like that. Now the steering assist, um, you can turn that off. Uh, the pilot assist, actually turn the steering wheel while you're driving and it keeps you in the center of the lane. If you want to turn that off, you simply just toggle it off. Lane keeping aid, roadside information, ready to drive notification, uh, the steering wheel, you can set it, to, right now it's set to pretty comfortable, uh, but if you want a firmer steering wheel, so it takes a little bit more, uh, a little bit more resistance, you don't want it so easy to turn, you can turn that firm steering wheel on. Uh, the air suspension, you can actually turn that off, um, but it's really nice to have. And then you have the air suspension control for easy entry and exit. In other words, it's going to lower the vehicle down when you turn the vehicle off. So when you get out, it's easier. You're not, if let's say you're not that tall, uh, you can turn that feature on. So that way the vehicle lows down, it's easier to get in and out. And then when you drive, it lifts back up. And then you have a firm suspension feel in which you can activate as well. The next one will be your sound settings. Uh, so this is where you can, as you're playing the music, you can uh, have it to where the, the, the sound is more for the front or the back or the driver or everybody, that kind of thing. Uh, so you can set that. So you can have it focus only on the driver or only on the rear passengers, or you can have it all. So let's say the kids are listening to you know, the, the music they want to listen to, but you're not really fond of it. You can have the kids listen to it, and not so much here in the front or you know, vice versa. Uh, you do have the ability to have a surround sound, adjust the treble, bass, and subwoofer. You can always reset it as well. The connectivity, uh, this is where you set up Bluetooth devices. Um, and also the vehicle actually has its own connectivity as well. And that's where we're getting over the air updates. We're also getting um, the location uh, with the air quality as well as the, the Google uh, searching and all that stuff. So it has its own cellular connection. So if your cell phone's dead, uh, you can still get roadside assistance. You can get all kinds of information and stuff from that. From that. And also you can set up your own Wi-Fi as well and connect devices. Now when you connect devices, uh, you can delete old devices, but you can pair multiple devices and then prioritize one over the other. So let's say you have two, two phones, or you know, doesn't matter, I think it's up to 10 or something, six or 10, I forget, uh, that you can pair onto the system. And then let's say but two people are in at the same time, then one will be the priority. But let's say that person is not driving, somebody else is driving, then since that phone is not involved, the priority phone is not involved, then the second one kicks in. Uh, so you can go ahead and pair everybody's phone and you just set the, the priority, set them in a priority uh, order. As far as what's going to be, what calls are going to be coming through the system, basically, or what music is going to be playing through the system, that kind of thing. All right, so the next one is controls. Um, so you can fold the third row uh, headrests uh, right here. So when you hit that, the seats are already down, so I can't do it, but that'll actually fold them out of the way. And the purpose of that is so you can see behind you a little bit better. Let's say people get out of the, out of the vehicle, you don't, have to get, you, know, you don't have to go over there and turn, manually fold the seat headrest down to see better. You can actually just hit that button and fold them down. Uh, wiper service position. The wipers are kind of recessed under behind the hood, the windshield wipers. So when you do to the when you hit that wiper service position, it lifts them up so you can access them and change the wiper blades and check them out and all that stuff, clean them. Um, so exterior mirrors uh, tilt at reverse. So if you want to, when you put it in reverse, the side mirrors tilt down. Uh, you know, like sir, I'm not a big fan of that for my scenario. I don't need that, but some. Your driveways or uh, or or 
garages, that kind of thing. If you're backing in, sometimes it's uh, more convenient to have them tilt down so you can see what's cl close to the ground curbs and stuff like that. Also, the auto dimming mirrors, you can turn that feature off. Adjust passenger seat. Uh, so right now I can push that and I can use the driver side controls to move that seat over there. So the seat on the passenger side is now moving when I'm using the controls on my seat. Um, so let's say for whatever reason, I just want to move that seat to a different position that's in the way or whatever, uh, I can quickly do that just by you know using that um, using the system here. And then once I turn it off, it goes back to my seat adjusting. All right, so locking visual, unlock and lock feedback. So in other words, when you hit the button to lock the vehicle, it's gonna flash the lights. So from a distance, let's say you like, I don't know if I remember to lock the door, or you're in your house or, in a, or whatever, and you look out the window and you hit the button and you see the lights flash, tell, letting you know that the vehicle received the signal and locked the doors. Um, you can also have the audible unlock and lock feedback. So when you lock it, it's gonna make a sound, you know? So if you wanna turn, the, turn off, me personally, I would turn off the audible, but have the visual. Uh, so that way I can look at it, I don't have to hear it, that kind of thing. Especially if, you know, you're locking the doors and there's, you know, you're around other people, you don't wanna, uh, you don't wanna interrupt people by having, you know, noises and stuff. Now, unlock doors, you can have one or all. And basically what this is, when you walk up, and touch the handle, or when you push the button on the key fob, when you unlock the doors that way, uh, you can have, like, let's say I uh, walk up to the driver door and I touch that that handle. Do I want all the doors unlocked when I do that? Or do I just want that one handle, that one door to open? As a safety feature, you could potentially uh, have it to where it only unlocks the driver door. Because if you have it unlock all the doors, somebody could potentially jump in the other side or something like that. So, you know, that's something that, that depending on your particular needs, uh, you can adjust that. Auto close sunroof cover. So uh, if you have that turned on, when you get out of the vehicle, um, it's just gonna close the, the cover. So that way the sun, you don't, if you accidentally leave it open, sun in the summertime especially is gonna, you know, heat up the interior a lot. So if you go ahead and have that turned on in the summertime, it keeps the interior a little bit cooler and not so much sunlight shining in here. Now the display is the trip information um, on the, here, on the, on the, 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 um, the gauge cluster next to the steering wheel, uh, you can turn on the heads-up display, you can have the trip information, uh, have it turn on or automatically turn on when, you, you know, at, depending on your needs, um, uh, right there. You can manually turn it on or off automatically, or you can have it never show it, never show the trip information. Uh, you can adjust the heads-up display right here. So you have the interior brightness, and then you have the interior light in intensity. So basically the, the, the interior lights, like the backlit buttons and the essential lights that the vehicle has, you can adjust the brightness. Now there is additional lights, um, uh, like ambient lighting in which you can turn off or have low or have high. So some people don't like a lot of additional lights inside the vehicle. Um, so you can turn those off. Some people like to have a little bit of light, a little bit of light in the floorboard in different places. Uh, so you can set that low or high, you know? So, you know, so that's the, the, the difference there. Now, welcome light. Uh, so this would be like, um, you know, you, you, you unlock the doors and then the, the, light, the lights turn on, the interior lights, that kind of stuff. So that way it makes you feel welcome when you come to the vehicle and things are brighter, uh, having the, the welcome light turn on. Daytime running lights, you could turn those on or off. Uh, obviously, I would leave them on, but um, for whatever reason, if you want to turn them off, you can right here on the screen. All right, so let's go back. Next one is the profiles. So once you set up, um, the, this one has three different profiles that you can set up independently, and it goes by the key. Uh, so you can connect to the key, uh, and so basically you, you, you adjust the seat, you adjust all these different things on the screen the way you want it, like all these different preferences, and then you don't want it to somebody else to come along and change everything and then you, you got to reset everything back up. So the profiles will basically, um, you know, save all your settings, the seat position, 
uh, the, the, the firmness of the steering wheel, the suspension preferences, all those climate control settings, all that stuff will be saved to your profile. You can even have a, a speed limit. So like there's a, an additional key, uh, the, like, the, like as I say, let's say you have a, a, a son or a daughter or whatever, um, that's where that key could be used where it gives them a speed limit and um, you know, certain limitations in that. Same thing with like a valet key, it's something like that as well. All right, so privacy, you can go in here and you can uh, change the privacy settings. So with Google, you, you have your location, uh, you have different information that you're giving this, the, 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 the programs and stuff like that. So you can limit what kind of information, like if you don't want them to know your location, you can go in here and you can turn that off if you want. Now, you know, you're not gonna be able to get the air quality in your area, that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, or, yeah, you know, there's just gonna, you're gonna limit your convenience, but, it's at, but you're gonna expand your privacy basically. All right, and then Google. Uh, so this was just gonna like show the, um, just what's on this vehicle, you know, the Google assistance and the, and you can send feedback to, to Google, different services. And then the language, uh, this is where you can do the language, um, date and time, your unit. So let's say you wanna do kilometers per hour, stuff like that, you can change it the way you want it. This is where the security update was. October 1st, 2022 was the last one. And then basically um, system uh, details about the system here. And then you got the last software update. You can check for updates, which is doing now. All right, so we're at 2.5. Automatic software download, we can turn that on. Storage, and you can see how much uh, room we have here. So it's showing a total of 36 gigabytes. And so we're not even close to being maxing that out. So we have zero files. We can reset and then we have legal information. So that's the kind of stuff you wouldn't normally go into that much. All right, so now let's go into the climate control. So you can see right here, they have the, the temperature and it has automatic and they have like a red arrow and a blue arrow. This is for your, to ex represent your your climate control so we hit that right there expands it up uh, so then we can adjust the fan speed here where we want the air to blow so we can adjust it here here or here or we can have it automatic uh, we have them synced right now so the driver and passenger are the same but we can unsync those you can like breaks the chain there so now we can adjust this a different temperature than the driver we can sync them if we want now, if we, we can also just start adjusting the passenger and it'll unsync it. You also have front and rear defroster, recirculate the air, uh, that kind of stuff. Now, right here and here, these little seats, here on the driver's seat, it has a three-stage cooled seat, three-stage heated seat, and a three-stage uh, heated steering wheel. Typically, heated steering wheels are just on or off. This one has a three stage, so high, medium, and low uh, heat. The passenger seat is just three stage ventilation and three stage heat. And they just kind of expand up, you, it allows you to adjust it, and then it goes, goes away after a second. All right, you see this one? This little, looks like a camera symbol. Well, that's what it is when we hit that it pops up the camera system. So we don't have to put it in reverse or anything like that to view what's around the vehicle. So when we hit that, it shows um, uh, different views. This one right now is in a 360 mode, but when you're in there, you can basically choose what we want. Uh, so if we want the front view, we can hit the front view. We'll go back to the 360 view that way. We wanna see the what's behind the vehicle. We can see the right side here. And it actually so, shows uh, the front wheel there. And you can see all along the side of the vehicle there. So you can see the front wheel to the back. Same thing with the left side. 
So you can see independently each view or you can see the top down. Now, when things, you'll notice that there's a vehicle next to me and there's a curb and stuff and you see how it get, kind of gets stretched out because the actual cameras are on the underside of the side mirrors. So that's why it looks like the, the it, you only see the bottom portion of this car over here. So although you, um, you do get the, kind of a distorted view, you do get uh, realistic things on the ground. So you see these lines in the parking lot, even this one way over here, you can see they're fairly straightforward. This curb is actually, you know, in line with the vehicle. Um, so it does a good job of taking all those views from all those cameras and stitching them together in a way that's helpful to where you can see where you're at in relationship to other things around you, immediately around you. Now you can turn the parking sensors on or off. Uh, you can also have the rear auto brake. So if you're backing up and the parking sensor sense something very close, it applies the brakes. Um, so that way you don't accidentally hit something. So it kind of helps out with that. Now you do have some settings specifically for the camera. You have the wheel guidelines, which you can turn on or off and the volume of the parking sensors because it kind of beeps when you get too close to something. Now when we put it in drive, you can see the there's the 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 guidelines there when we put it in reverse it gives us by default the backup camera and the guidelines there we can always hit that and go back to the um, 360 view now if we you notice there's this little car sometimes will pop up when we're in particular views uh, that is for the parking sensors because as you get close to something and it starts beeping at you, letting you know there's something there, it'll give you a visual reference uh, of something wherever it is, front, back, left, right, and let you know where it is to look. Um, let's say there's like a, a sign or a pole or something like that and you can't immediately see it by looking out the windows. You can see what the beeping is all about by looking at that. You can always get out if you're in you go back and park and you can always get out of the camera by pushing that if it doesn't go away typically when you put it in reverse then you can put it in drive it'll go away but uh that's if you if if you need to while you're just sitting still you can just go ahead and use that to make it go away all right so um show you these little additional shortcuts here all right so when we saw that you see how these are categorized by color same thing here. So we can pop that up and we can choose a different one. Pop that up and choose a different one. Pop that up and choose a different one. Uh, so maps is its own category by itself. Uh, so yeah, so you can just, let's say, well, let's go ahead and go to satellite radio. Now when we go back here, it's still there. If we go over here to just regular radio, pops that up but when you come back to the home screen it's still there so and then of course since this category has the most uh, options you hit that and it goes and expands that portion it basically goes to this tab here and expands that so that way you can make a, uh, a selection from all your your options there okay so hopefully this has been helpful you got an idea of how the system works how to navigate through it um, it it's a fairly base, I mean, it's fairly easy to use once you understand it, but if you don't understand it, it's gonna be really complicated. And you know, you don't want to be frustrated using it if you don't know how to use it. And that's the way it is with everything. You don't know how to use something, uh, then it's just going to be an exercise in frustration. But uh, watching this video hopefully has helped you uh, understand the, uh, the basics of it to where you have an idea on how to use it and as you actually use it you'll you actually internalize it and understand it more once you start using it so this has just been an intro to the system hopefully it's been helpful thank you for watching and thank you to parkway volvo here in wilmington north carolina for providing the vehicle i'll leave a link in the description for their website you can actually order cars from them anywhere in the united states and um it's pretty interesting so i'll leave their website there and uh and you can check them out if you want to thank you for watching see you next time